Hi guys, today we are going to discuss about a cloud web security. Here we'll understand how does the web security uh, details traffic works, okay? So you can see here we have the internal users who have a browsers, right, in which we browse our websites. The users initiates the connection from here. It reaches via your distribution switches to your gateway. This is your gateway. Your gateway can be your ASA firewall. It can be a router. It can be any other devices, it, but it should be a L3 device. Now through the gateway, the traffic gets redirected to your internet and via internet, it gets redirected to your cloud web security servers. So these are actual cloud web security servers, which gets redirected from your gateway itself, right? And from here, the gateway decides the request what you have forwarded from here, that request has to be sent to a websites or not. So basically on the cloud web security server, we'll have the blocked content or blocked files or blocked URLs. It means we have all the type of filterings present on our cloud web security server. So your request which was initiated from the user via your gateway, it reaches to the cloud web security server. Cloud security server filters your request, right? And if any encounter does not happen, it means your cloud web security is going to forward your request to the websites. Now, whenever the website receives a request, it receives a request with the source of a cloud web security servers, not as your users. It means, your web security server acts like a proxy. <clears throat> so it's a completely proxy based work. So your cloud web security servers acts like a proxy into a network. It receives a request from the user, right? It makes itself as a source and forwards the request to the websites. Once the websites receives a request, it responds back to the cloud web security servers. Again, it filters your reply. In a reply, it might filter multiple things. It might filter what's a malicious activities. It might filter about what kind of response you are getting. It will check against the content filtering or the file filtering or the URL filtering or whatever the type of policies you have implemented on this cloud web security. It has to pass through all those type of, you know, the policies, right? If the returning packet is fine, if any encounter does not happen over here, means that a reply will come back to your firewall and the firewall has to reply back to your users. So this is how the entire content filtering or the URL filtering happens based, based on your cloud web security. The most important part that, that you need to understand in the cloud web security is the proxy part. <clears throat> this proxy part is very important to understand. Here the actual request which is getting forwarded by the users is actually not presented on the websites. Let's say for example, I'll show you a kind of a flow wherein you can understand how the traffic flow happens. Now these are the a kind of a flows we can use it for our internal users, or we can also use it for the guest management purpose. Now, you can see our internal user initiating the traffic, sending your request to the internet. On the internet, we have a cloud web security servers. Through the cloud web security servers, your request going to the website, a returning packet coming to your cloud web security servers, and then from the cloud web security servers, replying back to the internal users. This is how the flow happens. Now, if we see detailed packet flow, then we can understand from here. <clears throat> here, you can see this is a client who is actually initiating a traffic. This is your gateway. On the gateway, we have two IPs over here. You have a private IP, you have a public IP. And here we have a cloud web security server and the cloud web security server has to send the traffic to your Google server. So in our request packet, what do we have? So we basically initiate the traffic through our browser to the google.com. 
So this IP address 192.168.100 is actually a guy who is initiating the traffic. And you can see the Google server's IP 74.125.244 dot 97 which actually which is actually your destination in my request packet <clears throat> now this request will be initiated by the client browser right in this way right the request reaches to your firewall your firewall finds that my request ip my request ip needs to be translated to the public ip so it gets translated to the public interface ip which belongs to the wan interface it makes this WAN interface IP as a source, and then the packet gets forwarded to the same destination. Your destination till now is same. Now this packet is basically getting forwarded from your ASA to the cloud web security server, right? So the cloud web security server checks that you are trying to check, you are going to, you are going to send the traffic to the google.com, right? You can see this traffic basically reaches from the uh, ASA to your cloud web security server, because in between these web security servers are trying to play a role of proxy. So via the proxy, your request will send to your Google server. Your Google server has to give a response. It gives a response back to a proxy server, <clears throat> wherein you can see in a returning packet who is a in a returning packet, who is the source IP? You can see the source IP here. It gives a response back to the public IP address of the ASA, wherein you can see the source IP address is 172.3.246.115. You can see this is 115, which is actually a proxy server. So whenever the request was received, whenever the request was received by the ASA, it was basically redirected to your cloud web security server and the cloud web security server had forwarded the packet to the Google server. In a response, in a response of a HTTP, you can see the packet has been responded from the Google to the cloud web security server. And from the cloud web security server, you can see the packet is being responded to your gateway, <clears throat> in which we can see the source IP address is of a cloud web security server and destination is the translated IP address of your ASA firewall. So once this packet reaches to your ASA firewall, your ASA firewall untranslates back your the it untranslates back the destination IP in a reply packet to a real IP address of your initiator, right? And you can see it initiates it actually untranslates back to the real IP address wherein the source again remains the proxy server, and then it comes back to your user. So this is how the entire packet flow of the cloud web security works. The very important part that you need to understand in the cloud web security is the vital role will be played by your DNS servers. Now here we have a Cisco umbrella. Cisco umbrella is a cloud web security platform of the Cisco. Earlier, this Cisco umbrella was a part of OpenDNS. And OpenDNS was actually acquired by a Cisco, and then now it's named with the Cisco umbrella. <clears throat> now let's log in into a Cisco umbrella, and let's see. You guys also can create a trial uh, account with you, and you can do the cloud web security to your home network, to your office network with your trial account. Now here you guys can see, the open DNS is also a part of Cisco now. You can see uh, the open DNS is completely a part of Cisco. Now you can see here, these are the DNS servers, which are mandatory to be configured in your client, you know, in your client PCs. So whenever you guys are sending a request to any particular website, the request will be resolved, your domain name will be resolved by your DNS servers, which are very important. So until and unless you are not configuring the DNS server addresses of the umbrella, your traffic will not be reaching to the proxy server. So you need to make sure these DNS addresses 
are mandatorily configured inside your DNS or uh, inside your client PC. So it's very much mandatory to configure the DNS servers addresses in your client PC so that whenever you send a request, your DNS request will be forwarded to your cloud web security servers. So whenever the cloud web security servers request, uh, whenever the cloud web security servers receives a request from the client, now it decides based on your DNS request, whether your, your request has to be forwarded or the request has not to be forwarded. So the first play into a cloud web security is about the DNS configuration, which is most important part. So guys, overall, what did we understand here? If we configure a cloud web, if we want to do a cloud web security, we need to open a cloud, we need to open an account into a Cisco umbrella, and we need to use their DNS server IP addresses, and we need to log in, and we need to add our public IP. We need to add our home network into our uh, account, which we have logged in through. Let's say this is my account ID. In this account, I have the option to add a network. So whatever network I'll be having, let's say I'm connected with the public network or home network or the, you know, like office network, whatever the networks you have, you need to add that network over here. Once you add the network, then you will see, you'll get the options of doing the URL filtering and all, right? So the most important part you need to understand is you need to have the DNS configurations on your PCs. You need to have the account in your cloud web security. You have to log in into your cloud web security account. And then you need to add the public address and start doing the filtering. So after that, what will happen? Any users initiating the connection from this particular user will get filtered by your will get filtered by your cloud web security. So overall the packet reaches, your request reaches to your cloud web security server. From the cloud web security server, the packet reaches to the web servers. From the web servers, you get a reply. In between, your request and the reply triggers with the content filtering that we have applied on the cloud web security server. And from here, you'll get a reply back to your gateway and from the gateway, you're going to get a, a reply back to the users. So overall, in short, this is the packet flow of your cloud web security servers. See you guys in the next series. See you, thanks.